our first wholly original franchise in 25 years. Starfield is a game that we have spent years thinking about and working on. Let's go! Yeah! It's definitely a, kind of an all hands on deck, like hit the big red button. This is big, this is important. And uh, you know, it's coming right at us. So let's let's get on it with uh, with with everyone. Holy shit. The movement on this looks like 10x better. I feel like looks like a massive improvement. I'm finally feeling like that spark. That spark of like, oh, okay, now I really actually do want to play this. You know, we've been so lucky over the decades to make the kind of games that we love here. And throughout all that time, we'd often talk about and dream up the space game. What if we could take that feeling of being who you want to be and exploring a new world, but set it in space where you weren't really limited in where you could go or what you could do? There was a lot of excitement, but I think there was also a little bit of fear. The spotlight is on this studio right now to deliver Starfield under the weight and pressure of their own legacy. And many are worried or even mocking that the space RPG won't live up to the hype. A lot of gamers out there, we have dreamt of a game where we look to the skies and we can blast off into space and explore. We love to make games where we can explore these worlds we've done like with the Elder Scrolls and the Fallout series, but we wanted to do something brand new where you could explore with complete freedom in the galaxy, kind of that, that dream game. That dream, that visual, that style, I was completely sold. I think at that point, like, it was, the hype was manageable, right? It was like, okay, the next Bethesda game's gonna be pretty cool. Just for me and, and my community as well, the Starfield Direct last year was like when I think hype really kicked off. All the fear, I suppose, was gone. You know, we got that massive blowout of every intricate detail that could possibly be in the game. And I think that from, from there, I think everyone, including myself, was, was all in. I cannot wait to play this game. It is, it is gonna be an experience. I will say this, that the game sticks to the original vision. That took longer than I wanted. <laughs> you know, I'd say about halfway through the project, you realize this is why nobody tries to make this game. <laughs> um, so it's been a, you know, when you do these things, and you take some risks and you're really ambitious, that can be a very windy path but it, it is true to the vision we had. And we want to, as much as possible, say yes to the player. So the amount of content that we ended up making to have that really feel authentic to that, um, that, that did grow yeah. and, and grow from where we originally started. Thank you. Can't wait for you to play the game. So, pressure. Uh -huh. <laughs> Starfield is officially Bethesda's biggest game launch of all time. Well, the game has been in preview for the last week and it's already our most played next-gen exclusive game on Xbox. So, incredible day, new franchise launching, and it's a lot of fun. So it's been quite a journey uh, getting it here. Starfield is a game that I think early on I was cautiously optimistic for. As a content creator, you know, I was brand new. This is the first game, first time I'd ever done this. And so there was a little bit of kind of like, you know, a six-year-old going to Disneyland. Right? Just wide eye, like mystified, just I can't believe like I'm here. Like I had that feeling, like I can't believe I'm actually playing Starfield. Oh my gosh. You know, my first feeling was like, uh-oh. The first, I would say eight to 10, maybe even 12 hours that I played, I was like, oh no, this is, I'm not really loving this, uh, it's fine. I think that Starfield's first few hours are probably some of its weakest moments. You start walking through a, a quarry, and then you find a rock that, I don't know, feels like something that Isaac Asimov or Arthur C. Clarke wouldn't have quite thought interesting enough to write about. And then it does what's clearly meant to be the grand reveal as you step out into the wider space, and it's a barren quarry that looks like something the Power Rangers would have fought in. And you fight some pirates with a, with a combat system that doesn't feel meaningfully more nuanced than it did in Fallout 4 in back in 2016. I'm 
like thinking like is this gonna be a bad review am i gonna have to re really give starfield a bad review is this is this the whole game like this um <laughs> it's not just me right it's not, is it? Like, and they'll go, oh, thank God you said it first. I play these games for story, characters, loot, and exploration. And I feel in nearly all of these areas, Starfield does a mixed to poor job at them. As I said, I think the game's a five to a six. The ship building, it's nice. The graphics are okay, I guess. But uh, all the things that are supposed to make the game special make it worse. The most interesting things about when that review embargo lifted is I just immediately went to YouTube and, and onto websites, like the major websites of the people that I respect and just like went and read all their reviews and just seeing what people's opinion was because, yeah, it's, you never know if you're really high on something that people aren't or it could be the other way, you know, it goes either way with reviews sometimes. I remember being on a live stream, like right as, you know, all the embargoes were lifted and all the reviews were out and everybody was talking about IGN's uh, 7. <laughs> and that was surprising, and I remember being surprised. All right, everybody, strap yourselves in. This is gonna be a bumpy ride. There are a lot of forces working against it, and the combination of its disjointed space travel, non-existent maps, aggravating inventory management, and slow rollout of essential abilities very nearly did it in. I'm glad that I powered through the early hours, because its interstellar mystery story pays off and, once the ball got rolling, combat on foot and in space gradually became good enough that its momentum carried me into New Game Plus after I'd finished the main story after around 60 hours. We all had this sense of when does it get fun? When does it get interesting? Now, it does get better, but that was kind of my broader experience with Starfield. When does it get interesting? You know, there were obviously, yeah, there were a lot of, like, really glowing reviews that I didn't quite agree with. Um, there were some more harsh ones that I also didn't agree with. But that's, I mean, that happens with every game. Very rarely, I think, is everyone seeing completely eye to eye. This is a game that you will absolutely buy an Xbox for. But on the kind of funny scale, I gave it a four out of five. Oh. It's, it's five stars for me. I think it's, it, you know, so I think it's the best thing Bethesda have done in years. It's one of the, the best games I've played in years. It's exceptional. After that initial, you know, first day or so where I was worried that the game wasn't very good, I really did, you know, enjoy it and it picked up. Overall, my general statement on the game was that this is a game worth playing and that it's it's you know it is a fun a fun video game you know my initial experience really was like great with the game you know i had a great time with the characters and the writing from barrett to his kind of quips that he would always make and you know he gets a little chatty and you know like an actual friend that you would have like he gets a little annoying sometimes but he's still pretty endearing and charming and so you just kind of stick it out with him right we all have that friend uh, i'm that friend to a lot of people like luke shut up Oh, and hey, take this. You'll find it very useful out there. And it even tells the time. To be fair, there's things about it that are that exist today that I think as this game goes out to the general public, as Bethesda starts to get some feedback on it, they're going to see and they're going to adjust accordingly. And I think it potentially could bring it up to that five out of five scale. But today it's four out of five. Me being a Bethesda fan, it is a nine out of 10. Uh, but if I wasn't a Bethesda fan and I was just a normie playing the game, it'd be like a seven and a half. And we're asking the big questions. Why are we all here? Where is it leading? And what's next for humanity? My recollection of public response at the time and, and to a certain degree, the critical response was a broad thumbs up a broad sense of okay it's 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 good it's good from the user's perspective i think we've seen a bit of a over time that opinion has seemed to shift starfield is a game that actually bitters and sours with time it doesn't age like a fine wine and it's kind of interesting watching the community kind of go through almost the same feelings i had about the game i think there was some disappointment kind of at the start the excitement as they kind of got into some of the faction quests which are really good and then they also experienced a lot of them the same thing i do the kind of tail end of that which is well what do i do now like is this still going to be fun is this still going to be absorbing for another two or three hundred hours i think the general response was positive but then quickly died and rightfully so, you know, I totally understand as well, and, and I definitely felt that over the time, with my time with the game as well, is that as time has passed, you 
when you've completed all that handcrafted content, you know, there isn't a huge amount of stuff left, but there is a lot of planets if you wanted to go 100% them, but, but you're, you know, there's no real incentive to go and do that. The reason we've seen a recent influx of negative reviews around the game, it's a lot of people who have finished the game. They've gone through the whole story, 40, 50, 60 hours, 134 hours. All of these people have finished the game and they simply found it wanting for various reasons. It's really weird to complain and be like, oh, I, I played this game for 100 hours and I really liked it. What a disappointment. What? That doesn't even make sense. Ugh, you got me so confused. I don't even remember what we were talking about. Starfield peaked at 330,723 concurrent players on Steam. The concurrent player count has gradually declined ever since. As if everyone picked it up went, yeah, it works. Don't see much of a reason to stick around, really. It kind of felt like when you were done with the quests and the main story, I didn't really feel like there was a lot else to really enjoy. They made a great game. They just put a lot of extra stuff in it that somehow confused and, um, and distracted players from, from maybe some of the best parts of that work. And it was put down and people walked away. Obviously there are people who think differently and, and who love it. The more you give to Starfield, the more it gives back to you. Um, and that was one of our goals. I just knew you were special. Didn't I always say that? That you were meant for great things? It has come the time of year where everybody debates Game of the Year. Welcome to the 41st Annual Golden Joystick Awards. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Game Awards. Actually, now that we it's time for Game of the Year, and Starfield is ranking fairly low on a lot of these lists, if it's showing up at all, we sort of having a, a, a reconciliation with this concept that maybe it wasn't all that. Maybe it wasn't as iconic or forward-thinking or just impressive as we were all led to believe it would be. I mean, of course, everyone likes to talk about Baldur's Gate 3 and just how that completely caught the, the industry and the gaming world by storm last year. Here are the nominees for Best RPG, Baldur's Gate 3, Final Fantasy 16, Lies of P, Sea of Stars, and Starfield. And the Game Award goes to... All right, let's kick it off with our first award for Best Storytelling. The winner is... PC Game of the Year is... And the winner of Ultimate Game of the Year is... And the Game of the Year is... Baldur's Gate 3. Baldur's Gate 3. Baldur's Gate 3. Baldur's Gate 3! And the Game Award goes to... Baldur's Gate 3! Baldur's Gate 3! Baldur's Gate 3. And so maybe that was to their detriment that they didn't just be like, okay, let's just take No Man's Sky and Skyrim and just kind of you know, match them together until something comes out that works. Skyrim co-op modder gives up on developing Starfield together because, quote, this game is effing trash. Bethesda has taken the unusual step for a AAA video game developer of responding to negative reviews of Starfield on Steam. We are sorry that you do not like landing on different planets and are finding many of them empty. Some of Starfield's planets were meant to be empty by design, but that's not boring. When astronauts went to the moon, there was nothing there. They certainly weren't bored, end quote. Yeah, because they are on the fucking moon! If you didn't jump in at launch, I think the updates that have occurred are quite good, especially around performance. And the, the lighting improvement that came in the last update is actually a really significant improvement to the overall look and feel of the game. Like, you know, jumping in now and compared to at launch, it does look significantly different just with the lighting. But also with AMD FSR 3 and DLSS, like these are features that make the game run so much better and so much smoother that the experience of playing the game is, is cleaner. And if you haven't experienced it, it's definitely you know, you won't notice some of the issues that people had at launch with that stuff because you've got these benefits. Are the updates worth jumping into again? Probably not yet. I think that we haven't hit that point yet where Starfield is on the upward trajectory. If you've already played the game, you know, FSR 3, DLSS, uh, better lighting, bug fixes, the couple of other additions that they've made isn't necessarily enough to do a brand new playthrough. But I think, I think that moment is coming soon. <laughs> Starfield just got some minor but pretty great DLC news. 
We've all known since before the game even released that Shattered Space would be the very first DLC for Starfield, featuring its own storyline, and if Bethesda's past is anything to go off, new armours and spacesuits, clothing, characters, locations and weapons, and possibly even companion. Oh man, I I'm almost scared to, to like <laughs> have any expectations at all. So the pitch can't be for me, more Starfield, because I don't want more Starfield. I want the science fiction game that, you know, I know is possible. So it would have to be, yeah, a kind of rebuilding from the ground up. Like, I'm honestly looking for any excuse to go back to Starfield. So, I mean, just putting out DLC is enough for me. My hopes for the Shattered Space DLC are more about House Varun. We were hinted throughout the main story and side content for the whole game about what House Varun this faction is, and it, they were very absent, especially the core group of House Varun from the main game. There is even a hint about House Varun in the United Colonies capital, where you can see a star map and it's got the home system of all of the factions, except for House Varun, but they are listed there and it says unknown. So I think it's very clear that we're going to learn more about them in the Shattered Space DLC. That seems to be a very, you know, kind of big mystery in the lore of Starfield right now uh, that is really interesting. See that cluster of ships? Varun Zealot. You ever run into one? <laughs> Completely devoted to a deity they call the Great Serpent. But something that I would also personally like is like new features to the game. Personally, I would love some sort of a fleet system, like to command the Crimson Fleet or some sort of a fleet that you could then send out on, on missions and runs. You know, we've already got that system in the game that you can go on those missions yourself. I would love to be able to send a fleet of my own to go out on those missions and get some sort of rewards out of that. You know, I would love if it had some more expansion of the settlement system. You know, Fallout 4 had this pretty expansive settlement system where you really build things up and attract people to come and, and live there and work there and you kind of manage them. It was like this little management game and Starfields were very, just felt like a step back from that. It was like, you can build a base and you can recruit people, but once you recruit them, there's nothing else to do with them. They will just be there working and you don't have to manage them at all. But I do think <laughs> this Shattered Space DLC, uh, it probably has to come with some, some of those big features in addition to like the story content that they were planning for, I think it has to come with that package to bring the community back into Starfield. If they could also figure out how to kind of bring all these systems together in, in the Shattered Space DLC, that would be a big thing. But I, I think that's, I hate to say too much to ask because I feel like a lot of gamers will be like, we should, we, we paid a hundred dollars for this early access. We should get what we want. But you know, that that's a big tall order and that's, that's um, a hard thing to figure out, which they're, they're brilliant game designers, so I think they can, but maybe not all in the first DLC. I don't know. On Steam, Starfield got a new Steam DB update, which indicates that the next DLC, again, that being Shattered Space, is being tested eternally, indicating a possible March or April release date. Now, of course, I should emphasize that this is not confirmed, meaning that there is a good chance that this DLC will come after March or April. Shields ready. The rest is up to you. I think Starfield is, is a curious one because it's not like Cyberpunk, which came out and was genuinely non-functional, at least for many. It worked, it did what it was supposed to do, but it didn't resonate. I don't think it's that much of a dire situation. I think there's some revisionist history about the state that No Man's Sky and, and Cyberpunk, especially Sky, Cyberpunk launched in. You know, in, in 2020, when it launched, its primary systems was the Xbox One and the PS4, right? They were still the primary console base and the game just didn't work on those systems. Like, it, you know, you couldn't, you couldn't get around that. Whereas Starfield does work, it's a functioning game. It's definitely not that dire, even though sometimes the internet will make you think that it is. But um, I, I think it's only up here, upwards from here for Starfield. I don't think that it needs this complete overhaul. I think they need to kind of take this really amazing foundation and this like canvas that they've built with their new creation engine, with you know this, this world building they've set up, with all the lore that they have that they really haven't explored. They don't need a revolution. They just need to like slowly iterate and evolve on what they've already set up. But yeah, I mean, at this point, I would need a, a reinvention of Starfield to get lured back in because I just think to play it and to experience it is a fairly tepid experience. I don't really think it needs an overhaul. I think I think it might just never be a classic, but 
Yeah, it, it, it didn't really promise anything it didn't deliver. You know, it's not a No Man's Sky situation where maybe the marketing was misleading. I think we got everything we thought. Maybe we just didn't enjoy it as much as, as we hoped we would. There were points in Starfield, I was like, you know what, this would be kind of nice if they put in some co-op. Like, I would love to jump in a ship with, with some of my friends and, and go run around on planets. It's tricky because, you know, Bethesda RPGs are so important to me as single-player experiences. Maybe the reason I thought about co-op in, in Starfield was because I wasn't really feeling that kind of engagement, I felt. But yeah, you know, maybe an MMO would be interesting. Will people want Starfield 2 15 years from now? I'd be surprised. I have a huge team of people I've worked with for some of them for 20 years, and um, it's really all of us together. Keep doing a great job. <laughs> Guys and gals, I can't wait to see what you create next. It really, really does have an impact on uh, silly kids like me and uh, millions of silly kids like me. So I really appreciate everything. Thank you. Thanks, Dad. Thank you.